Arthropod vectors. A vector is considered to be a pathogen transmission agent. When we deal with vectors, we've got two terms. One term we use for something that is going to transfer a gene into a plant. The other one is for something that is going to transmit a pathogen. In this particular case, we are looking at pathogens. Arthropods, by definition, are animals that have exoskeletons and jointed legs. So when we start looking at these, we're going to do a whole bunch of different arthropod vectors. This is a mosquito. Mosquitoes drink on blood. Mosquitoes do all sorts of nasty things. This is a tick. The tick also goes after blood. And again, it is an arthropod. It's not an insect, but it is an arthropod because it's got eight jointed legs rather than six that insects have. This is a louse. This is an insect. It's got six jointed legs. This is a flea, which is also an insect. And these are rather interesting things, and we'll talk a little bit about them. And then this is a kissing bug. A kissing bug is a thing that's kind of like a mosquito, but it's different because these things have rather interesting proboscis, which is the downward extension that they use to feed with. And so we're going to, you know, we're going to look at each one of these. The kissing bug transmits Chagas disease, which is not a big problem in the United States, but you do see things that look like this in the United States all the time. And most of them are going to be predatory on other insects. So let's start out with the mosquito. This is 80s. You can see this particular one is feeding. The ones that feed are the females. The females must have two blood meals in order to be able to lay their eggs. The two blood meals give them enough energy to be able to make the eggs and have them come out properly. The mosquito starts off feeding. And again, only females will do the feeding. The males do not do the feeding. The female mates with the male in the very beginning of its life cycle. And then it goes out and it finds these two blood meals. If it feeds on a person who has a pathogen in the that is transmissible by the mosquito in the first feeding, it will transmit that pathogen in the second feeding. If it does not feed on someone who has a pathogen in the first feeding, it does not transmit it in the second feeding. If it picks it up in the second feeding, well, it doesn't really matter because that pathogen is not going to go anywhere. When we look at the life cycle of the mosquito, we start out with this egg mass, and this egg mass floats, and they start out looking like this. They will hatch, and when they hatch, they hatch into these larvae, and the larvae look like that, and you can see these guys. They swim around, and they are in water in order to develop. They swim down to the bottom of the water thing, and they gather food out of the bottom of the water, and then they swim back up to the top where they breathe, and they breathe through these little straws that come out that pick up the oxygen out of the air. So they go down and they come up. We've got a video on that. They go through a stage where they become pupae, and this is the pupal stage. Over here, we've got three of them. They almost look like little lobsters or something like that. These guys are up at the top of the water and they are gathering oxygen. When they mature, the adult mosquito will actually crawl out on top of the water and then fly off. And here's your adult mosquito again. So, when we look at the life cycle, egg, larvae, pupae, adults. These are ticks. And ticks are rather unique because, again, they are little blood-sucking creatures. They come around. If you look at the underside of it, you can see that it actually has eight legs, four pairs. The circle in the center of the abdomen is actually the anus at the end of the digestive system. They've got the ability to hook onto just about anything and grab hold. When they get into a person, what they do is they burrow in with their mouth parts, they stick their mouth parts in, and then they draw blood out through the mouth parts, which is kind of like a soda straw. You can then try and remove them, and when you try and remove them, what you have to do is you have to grab down at the base with a pair of tweezers, and you have to pull them out, making sure that you got all the mouth parts out with them. They engorge on blood. You can see the two on the bottom start out, you know, look like they're kind of small. They will go through a couple of instars, which is a couple of changes, until they get up to the point where they're nice and ripe like this one, at which point when it's fully fed, it will drop off, and then it will migrate into a place where it will convert itself into hundreds of little eggs, and then the eggs will hatch in these tiny little pinpricks of a 
arthropod will come out and they start climbing up things trying to get up so that they can get on an animal and start their life cycle. When you see these, the two on the bottom, they are already in the second instar. And this huge thing in there is in the last. But the tick on the left on top, if it got in, it would turn into something like that within probably about 12 to 14 hours. I mean, they're they're like little vacuum cleaners and they just suck up the, the, the blood and then they go off. One of the problems we have with ticks is they transmit Lyme disease. Lyme disease, the symptom of it is a circular rash like this. You can find it on several different places on the body and basically the tick is going to have fed in the center of that rash. They call it a bullseye type rash. If you ever find this after you have a tick bite, you need to go get treated fairly quickly. The pathogen is a spirochete and it looks like this. There are three of them here. These are these are elongate, they're thin, and they're twisty. And they are rather difficult to culture. So what we do is we just try and kill them off. So anytime you get bit by a tick, make sure you get it all out and make sure you check periodically for about two months to make sure that you aren't developing a rash like that. If you have any concern, go to a physician. There are many different types of lice. They basically feed on human and animal tissue. They are associated with the hair parts because basically the egg is laid by the adult on the hair and they call the egg a knit. This particular photograph shows a knit with the louse emerging from that and then it will go and find a place to be able to continue on. They like areas where there is a certain amount of hair associated with it because the hair provides pro for protection and allows them to feed properly. This is a flea. Fleas are rather nasty animals. Fleas have complete life cycles like mosquitoes do. The adult flea lays eggs. The eggs drop off onto the ground or into your carpet where they hatch into larvae. The larvae then feed on organic matter down in the carpet or in the ground. Eventually they pupate. When they pupate, they turn into the adult flea. The adult flea then finds a host to feed on and they will feed on the on the host for as long as they possibly can. They're a rather unique organism. They transmit bacterial pathogens. If your animal has fleas, what you have to do is you have to, not only do you have to treat the animal, you have to treat the area where they stay at. You have to wash the bedding. You have to vacuum the floors. You have to, if they're outside, you have to be able to treat the ground so that it kills off the larvae. And sometimes this is a process that can take months to actually get rid of. This is a bed bug. They're nasty little blood-sucking creatures and basically they come around in the night and they will feed on the host. They normally go for the lower part of the extremity, the the ankles, the feet. They stay protected because they are soft body insects. You can tell if they've been around because you find little spotting on the bedding. So if you've got them and you need to get rid of them, it is quite a process because you have to take all the bedding, you have to wash all the bedding, you have to basically spray insecticide all around the bed, you have to make sure they're not behind the headboard, take the headboard off, take the mattresses up, spray everywhere you can, and then put everything back together and hopefully you'll be done with them. If you want to look at them in real life, they look like that. And that often kind of looks like a little cockroach, but it's a little bit different. They don't run around. And what they do is they normally find a place that they can stay behind a headboard in a crack in the bed or something like that, where they've got this nice place to be able to hide out until you come along at night and you lay down and then they will feed. So when we look at vectors, there are a lot of different kinds of vectors that we've got. And basically what they do is they all transmit various pathogens.